everyone to this meeting of the Dunedin City Council. Welcome to councillors, staff, uh, public and the media. Our opening today will be taken by Jeff Mitchell, Church of, the, of Jesus Christ and the Latter-day Saints, um, with a prayer. Thank you, Jeff. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful to have such a wonderful place to meet for the Council this day. We're grateful for the blessings of living in the land that we do, that we have freedom of choice, and that we have the ability to um, do things that we wish to do. We are thankful for the councillors and the Mayor and all those who assist for them taking this responsibility to help run our city, to make it go well. We pray a blessing on each of them, that their families and their health may be well, and that they may be able to make correct decisions this day and going forward that will help the citizens of this great city of Dunedin, that we will be blessed to have a wonderful city that those around us will want to come to and be part of. We pray for these things and do so in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right, there are no um, speakers at public forum today. Um, on to apologies. I'll move from the chair that we accept an apology from Councillor David Benson Pope, seconded Councillor Staines. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Carried. Confirmation of the agenda. I move from the chair that the Council confirms the public part of the agenda with the following alterations. In regard to Standing Order 2.1, option C be adopted in relation to moving and seconding and speaking to amendments, and that item 14, the Dunedin Provisional Local Alcohol Policy, be withdrawn as an, as an item. Um, seconded, Councillor Staines. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. And I take it that you are all in receipt of the explanation for the, for the withdrawal of that item. Uh, declarations of interest, item five. Um, I'll move that the council notes uh, amends. Are there any amendments to the um, declarations of interest? So there are none, so I'll we'll move that we note the elected members' interest register and confirm the proposed management plan for elected members, and further that we note the executive leadership team's interest register and confirmed, confirm the proposed management plan for, for the executive leadership team's interest. Second, Councillor Staines, no discussion. I'll put it. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Carried. Item 6, confirmation of minutes. I'll move that the Council confirms the public part of the minutes of the ordinary Council meeting held on the 20th of February 2018 as a correct record. Second, Councillor Staines. Any discussion on that? Councillor Vandivis. Um, the uh, items for consideration by the Chair on the 12th of February, I'm looking at page 22 of our open attachments. Sorry, am I one ahead, am I? Yep, um, the, the Deloitte property review report that you requested, is that what you're referring yes. to? Yes, and also the cost benefit of the additional meterage for the new proposed Leith Bridge. It's, it's so uh, you, uh, just, just to clarify, you, I take it you haven't received those or you're seeking to... Um... Uh, yes, I haven't received or had any confirmation whether or not we're allowed to see, even in confidential, the Deloitte property review report, which I'm very anxious to see. It's 12th of February now, I still don't have an answer. And also there was a, a request for a cost benefit on the additional meterage gain for Leith Bridge. Um, I've just had an email saying that apparently there's been no uh, specific cost benefit done, um, but I would still like to have some indication of what the benefit was for the $1.2 yeah. million dollars proposed. Right, so the, the motion before us is that we confirm the minutes. So all we're arguing about, or all we're discussing, is whether the minutes here record what actually happened. And they do accurately, I'm quite happy with that, but right. you did suggest the possibility of discussion, which is what I was doing. Well, insofar as we're discussing whether the minutes are accurate or not, we're not having, we, we can't, we're not in a position to have any discussion about the contents. It's, are they accurate or not? Uh, uh, Ms. Graham has indicated she will follow up. Thank you. Okay, so, um, 
I've moved. They've been seconded. Uh, is there any other discussion? I'll put it all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Carried. Uh, and I'll further move that the Council confirms the minutes of the Ordinary Council meeting held on the 27th of February 2018 is a correct record. Second to Councillor Staines. Any discussion on that? There being none, I'll put it all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Carried. Committee minutes. Item 7, Infrastructure Services and Networks Committee. Councillor Wilson. Uh, <coughs> apologies. I'll move that the Council notes the minutes of the Infrastructure Services and Networks Committee meeting held on the 12th of February 2018. Any Councillor O'Malley? Any discussion? I'll put it all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Item 8, Community and Culture Committee. Uh, Councillor Hawkins. Oh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I will move uh, that the minutes of the Community and Culture Committee held on the 13th of February 2018 be accepted as a true and correct record. Thank you. Seconded Councillor Lalfiso. Any discussion? I'll put it all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Item 9, Planning and Environment Committee. Councillor, I take it either Newell or Stedman? Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I move that the uh, minutes of the Planning Environment meeting are a true and correct record and be accepted as such. Right. Seconded, Councillor Lord. Any discussion? I'll put it all those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? Carried. Hearings Committee. Is that, uh, this is on 10, is that Councillor Hawkins again? I think you may have chaired this. Ain't nothing like paper. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Worship. I'll move that the uh, that Council note the Part A items of the minutes of the Gambling and TAB Venues Policy Hearings Committee meeting held 20th of February 2018. Seconded. Councillor Alfiso. All those in favour. Uh, any discussion? All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Minutes of community boards. Councillor Wiley, pure perennial collective movement. Uh, well, perhaps I should rephrase that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just say I inherited it from Andrew Noon. Um, I uh, move that Council notes the minutes of the community boards of the Wakawai Coast Community Board, the Otago Peninsula Community Board and the Strathtyre Community Board. Second to Councillor Lord. Any discussion? I'll put it all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Carried. Um, item 14 has been withdrawn. Uh, item 15, gambling and TAB venue policy. Um, I understand we are. Oh. Mr Pickford? Oh, right, okay. Um, so before this is um, moved, I'll give everyone the opportunity to ask any questions um, that they wish to ask. And um, I assume, Councillor Hawkins, that you'll be available to answer questions too, just in, if there's something that isn't, um, if the staff are, not, if it's not appropriate for staff to answer. So, uh, can I invite questions, Councillors? This may be quite short. Councillor Wiley. Um, was there any um, presentation or submission made by organisations such as um, Bendigo, Lion Trust or anyone that uh, deals with the proceeds out of the gambling machines? Uh, through the Chair, I believe there was, but I think um, maybe Aaron, maybe you had a better position to answer that, sorry. As does the paper, um, but yeah, the, the gaming trusts presented, um, a number of them presented to the hearings, yep. Yeah. In writing and in person. <clears throat> I may be wrong, but I was under the impression that, yes, <clears throat> the full, the, the minutes, albeit unconfirmed, are in the open attachments, item 10. Yeah. 
So, any further questions? Councillor Wilson. Uh, just understanding, um, in light of the matter that's been taken off the agenda, um, the LAP, what is the right for appeal as compared to the local alcohol policy um, for are you aware of it? Is, is it? Do they have any similar appeal rights? I'm unaware of any appeal rights. Thank you. No further questions? Your move, Councillor Staines. Um, the recommendation on. Uh, as a seconder, Councillor Hawkins. Discuss, do you wish to speak to it, Councillor Staines? Speakers, Councillor Lord. Oh, look, I just wanted to say that um, I thought uh, page 66.12, the hearings committee was disappointed that the industry submitters minimised the harm, and I think that's something that um, is prone to happen in these situations. Obviously, people that are making a coin out of it are pretty happy to suggest that it's doing no harm, and I was quite just, I thought that was a poignant note in the report to me. I just thought, yes, well, we're uh, making this decision, and it's, and for me, I can support this uh, quite heartily, and um, I just think it's a good good position to take. Yeah. Can mean those that, or Aaron or whoever submitters. Good to speak, Councillor Vance. Um, uh, it, it's, it's really a question, and that is on page 65. It says that those opposed to the proposed policy made the following points. Are we to accept that those points are actually factual, or is this just the opinion of of some people, like for instance, it says over 80% of the adult population gambles for entertainment. Um, I'm just wondering if we are to accept those as actually confirmed or simply uh, those that oppose the proposed policy made these points, whether anyone had actually checked up on them. Um, well, my, I stand to be corrected, but I believe that the appropriate body to weigh up the veracity of those claims was the hearings panel. And sure. it's reported here that they were told that, but it was for them, uh, and that's the basis for their recommendation. So um, I, I, people are at perfectly liberty to believe them or not, but I would suggest that it, the most appropriate body in the, <coughs> in the process was the hearings panel, and that whether we believe it or not is, well, it might influence the way you vote, but. Okay, so just to clarify, all those following points made in 9A, we are not accepting those by voting for this recommendation? Um, no, we, we, we're ex by the recommendation, we're just adopting the recommend, we would be adopting the recommendation of the hearing panel. Right. I think the report does make it clear that these are points that were raised in submissions. So people can say, what they would like to in submissions. That was the submissions, that's all this paper is reporting to you, that they were points made in submissions. And but, but those facts haven't been verified at all. Thank you. No, no, it's fine. No, and, and I um, would recall the, um, you know, the old adage, lies, damn lies and statistics. Uh, Councillor Elder. Thank you. It's really interesting, and, and thank you for the hearings committee on this. Last night, Dr Lance Armstrong said there's a direct link between sick kids and up north and gambling. And Dr Max Abbott of the Auckland University said gambling harm is two times that of um, drug addiction. So it's a, a significant problem, and one which Lance uh, Mr Armstrong said that he would like to see all pokies removed from Northland. So I think this is a, a great move and I endorse it. Councillor Gary. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I would like to concur with my colleague Councillor Lord in his comments around the minimising of harm. Uh, in terms of those presenting. But I also note um, in the findings on page 66, item 14, 
um, because I think this is an important point for our community, um, and this is, this is a difficult tension for our community. There was no evidence presented that would indicate the risk of a large number of gambling venues closing in the next three years, which is the life of this policy. Therefore, there should not be an impact on the amount of money available for grants to community projects. <clears throat> I too would like to add my thanks to the hearings uh, panel for the thorough job they did in the engagement with the community. And I'll be supporting the motion. Professor Wilson. Thank you, Your Worship, and um, I'll echo those thanks to the committee. Having sat on this committee once before, I know it's an interesting and rather uh, takes you to a place that not everyone has to see about what gambling does in our community. Um, and it's, I just want to note, um, in the way I ask that question, is that today we were meant to be dealing with two policies about harm. And um, I just think it's Congratulations, I suppose, is the only way to put it to the people who wrote this legislation and gave and empowered this council to make decisions on gambling in our communities and how um, it's ironic that we can't deal with one today which was equally to do with harm to our community and, and communities having control over that. And I think it's um, very sad legislation that those two um, matters of harm haven't been dealt with in a con um, consistent manner and allowed the communities to have their say on it. So, um, and here we have Kevin who deals with the, both sides of those um, tortuous, um, addictive things. But um, yeah, uh, uh, and I suppose the only way I can do is say um, what good legislation this is that empowers the council to do it. Any further speakers? Uh, Councillor Wiley. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. When this first uh, was put out, uh, I never supported it at the uh, council back when we uh, looked at taking it to the hearings because of some of the recommendations as I saw it at that point. Um, having sat and chaired these hearings, I know how difficult it is to deal with all aspects of a hearing and actually go in with a, an open mind and basically listen to all sides of the argument. The one thing that I would say is that I think actually the hearings panel has done a good job in actually looking at all aspects of this uh, issue. Um, and there are probably some other findings I would have liked to have seen, but it's not, wasn't open or wasn't a key part, I take it, of the hearing and that is actually gambling as a whole in the sense of online gambling, which I actually think is a, a much larger problem. The one thing that I was disappointed in the, in the hearing and this uh, presentation of what were the paper we have in front of us, it didn't articulate actually the positive aspects of what comes back into the community. There's a quick you know, comment that there is some positives but the number of organisations that many of us are involved in that actually benefit from these proceeds. And so I'm, I'm, I was pleased to see that there wasn't a sinking little reduction in numbers of machines and that that was clearly looked at. But I also think that there could have been a little bit more positive nature in the sense of the impact of the funds that go through our community to our sports clubs and our local organisations, non-profits, and the impact they have in the community as well. Thank you. <coughs> Further speakers? Councillor Hawkins. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'd like to uh, thank uh, my colleagues, Councillors Lofiso and Steadman, uh, for their work on this, and particularly Mr Mechin, uh, who guided us uh, through this process. It's not an easy one. Um, the legislation is quite narrow in terms of the powers that it gives us to reduce uh, gambling-related harm in our communities, essentially around uh, the number of machines and where those <coughs> machines might be. Um, the, the, the topic of, of online gambling came up in submissions, but that's not that's outside the scope of uh, outside of the scope of this policy. And um, a bit nervous about correcting Councillor Wiley, he might not vote for it anymore, but uh, the proposed policy is for a sinking lid of, uh, on gaming machines uh, across the city uh, with a relocation clause available in very uh, defined circumstances so long as they don't relocate into what is the existing uh, sinking lid area uh, in the South Dunedin. 
Um, the submissions that, we, that the committee heard were essentially um, balanced between people who think we're doing about enough within the scope of the powers that we have uh, to address uh, gambling related harm in our community and those who think that we could do a bit more uh, to, to deal with uh, the negative effects. Um, and, and I'm not one uh, to go in for silent majority arguments, but I do want to acknowledge uh, as part of this process um, the difficulty um, that one side of that argument has in fronting up to a public process and sharing what are, are quite personal and quite uh, embarrassing stories of uh, the problems associated with gambling related harm and I want to especially thank those uh, who had the bravery to do that. Um, the concerns around the loss of community funding are valid ones um, and, and as has been pointed out in the paper it was the view of the committee that over the life of this policy, which needs to be reviewed every three years, there was no evidence presented that um, there would be a rush of venue closures and that this policy would result directly in uh, a lack of funding uh, to community projects. But I, th I, I made that point during the hearings and I accept that um, it's slightly disingenuous. <laughs> Councillor Hall. Um, Your bookie be ringing up. Because <laughs> Because, because a, sinking lid, a sinking lid policy by definition means that we're aiming to get to zero over time. That would be uh, the ideal outcome. Uh, but the reality of the situation is that that isn't going to be something uh, that happens quickly. Uh, and it's my personal view that if the projects that are currently funded this way are of a genuine community benefit, then they should be uh, funded in a far uh, fairer and less regressive way through taxation rather than uh, in a way that they currently are, which relies on uh, the voracious uh, suffering of some people in our community to prop up uh, these organisations. So what I think this does uh, is gives us the opportunity, buys us some time basically, both as a community and as a country, to have a, di have a discussion around how we more fairly fund community projects. Uh, and, and I think it's, uh, it's urgent, really, that we address this uh, at a national level uh, and quit our addiction to Pokies funding as a way of uh, supporting uh, community projects and community outcomes. Uh, because those of us who sat through those hearings and, and, and both the written and oral submissions um, got to see the impact that that has on, you know, admittedly a small percentage of our population, but then in concentric circles outwards, those that they deal with, their, their whānau and their friends and their colleagues and, uh, and, and, and so forth. Um, and I don't think that minimising that does us any favours in terms of um, where we want to head with this policy. So uh, thanks again to everyone who made uh, submissions and helped us uh, through this, and I commend the proposed policy as drafted. Thank you. You wish to exercise your right of reply, Councillor Staines. I take there's no further speakers. I'm going to put it. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? Carried. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Kevin. <coughs> Item 16, um, the draft uh, DCHL group of statements. Good DCHL group statements of intent. I think. Um, and I understand Mr Toombs and Ms Graham are going to join us to answer any questions. And I think the Chief might have some observations on this too. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to uh, open this up to um, questions. Um, and on the face of it, um, you would, I'd not normally do that, but um, I'm aware that there are uh, implications and uh, unintended, perhaps, implications from from some of this. So I'm, I'm, I want to open it up and, and to as many questions as possible, so that everyone has a complete understanding of the issues. So, questions for a start, Councillor Vandevis. Um, I'd like to anticipate moving uh, seven in terms of a motion, but my questions are in uh, the next page, page 73, under 18, it says that there are some procedural challenges that would need to be addressed if voluntary compliance with Glagoima was requested. Um, it suggests, for example, that compliance would be subject to the, would not be subject to the auspice, auspices of the ombudsman, and some mechanism may be needed to develop compliance. My question is, given that we would know if a uh, request hadn't been complied with, do we really need a, uh, to, to monitor compliance, given that it's probably us that's going to be asking the questions in the first place? 
Well, can I just clarify that for a start? And just the premise is you say that it's likely that it'll be us asking the questions. I don't think council is going to be asking questions under Lagoima. Do it all the time, Your Worship. I uh, so, you so, council, so, not councillors. All oh, right. A and also members of the public, of course, can answer question, can ask questions. And so at the moment, if a member of the public, if anybody, makes a Lagoima request and it's declined, there's an independent body that's been set up to make a decision about whether that decline was acceptable or whether they meet in the middle somewhere or um, the ombudsman won't be doing that in this case because they don't have any statutory ability to do so because they're not required to make those decisions okay, in this instance. So, so that would be a challenge in the event that something was declined from a member of the public. Other, uh, can, you, can you let us know what other challenges uh, you foresee? Um, you say that there are some procedural challenges. We've just had one uh, clarified. What other challenges do you think there might be uh, regarding a voluntary compliance with Lagoima requests? That, uh, Councillor, that is, that's mostly it around how you would um, monitor and manage uh, declines, especially to members of the public, or partial releases, um, assessing whether the response was adequate, that kind of thing. If, for instance, a member of the public was to request some information that was declined or, or partial, would it be possible for that member of the public <coughs> to then forward that same Lagoima request to Council and for Council to perhaps uh, liaise um, with our Council-owned company to see if, in fact, it was a reasonable decline or not. I'm it, thinking perhaps you might be the person that might do this. <laughs> look, we would need to look at a mechanism. If Councillor of a mind to um, ask for voluntary compliance, this is what we would need to then work out what the best and most pragmatic mechanism was for something like that. And there are a range of um, things that we could potentially do from um, uh, seeking a change in the constitution of the company through to using the Office of the Auditor General who monitors the statements of intent, for example, um, and, and look at it, uh, compliance at that level. So there are, it would just, it would depend. I think one of your key challenges, Councillor, would be that because we're the owner of DCHL, who's the owner of Aurora, uh, if we agreed that com that decline was acceptable and within the Lagoima rules, uh, the potential allegation that we had a conflict of interest would be almost inevitable. So my suggestion would be we would be primarily focusing on an external and independent mechanism for decision making. Agreed. Would it not also be an even bigger conflict if we were not to ask for voluntary compliance and basically give one of our companies the ability to escape Lagoima altogether. Being really clear, just because we put this item in here, this is just a statement of fact. This isn't us ask, the staff arguing that you should not ask for this. Um, this is simply a statement of fact. There's a there's logistical challenge. The paper is up. Whether you do or don't require this is entirely a political decision. I, I understand uh, that, that it is very, very much a, uh, there's a logistical issue associated with it. Uh, my question was, if we weren't to <coughs> ask for voluntary compliance to Lagoima, would we be even more vexed in terms of uh, conflict? That is to say, essentially putting a shield around one of our companies. I think the fact that no other lines company owned by a council has done what it is that you're thinking about doing. The fact that the others do have an exemption suggests that, that if you hold that view, it might not be one that's universally shared. Councillor Hawkins. Thank you, Worship. It's, this is a, a follow-on question, I suppose, and it's around what arbitration might look like, I guess, in these circumstances. And the OAG has been, uh, I mean, the Ombudsman's not an option the Office of the Order General, maybe, we don't know. Um, I mean, do we have any idea of what our legal scope is to arrange our own independent arbitration process to be able to assess these things? I, I agree that it's incredibly fraught for this body to be making those decisions, and even if we were qualified to be able to do that. So has any, or is it too early to have had those kinds of conversations? We've, uh, through the chair, we've had some really preliminary um, conversations about, amongst ourselves about how that might be given effect to. Um, so I've mentioned a couple of mechanisms that 
are open. Another might be um, to look at some kind of slightly less formal way where we enter into an agreement directly around the arrangements for dealing with information requests. So that, that is something that we could do. Um, but again, we, we haven't spent any more time nutting out what it might be. And so, so, so will Council have a mind to progress this beyond today's meeting? From here, staff would put up a range of options to the holdings company board for <coughs> discussion, or does that not happen until we, they decide to accept it or not? Just trying to get a sense of how that fits into the timeline between here and the end of June. I would imagine we'll work reasonably collaboratively with the holdings company and with Aurora themselves to canvas the issues procedurally and then canvas potential. Uh, they'll come back, so the process from here is they come back to you and they will potentially say, look, we think this is a really good idea, it's really easy, or we think this is very difficult for the following reasons, and the issues are, and here's the potential resolutions, and we'll work together with those and we'll be bringing that back to you. Just lastly, for clarity, advancing this at this stage isn't committing anybody to doing anything. The only commitment would be not advancing it, in which case it definitely wouldn't happen beyond this point. Great. Thanks. Councillor O'Malley. Your Worship, um, just to point 11 on the discussion, which is effectively a follow-up of these two previous questions. So Aurora is effectively under the uh, is an energy company under the Energy Companies Act. Um, and if, if Aurora was a department of the council instead of a CCO, would it be effectively an energy company at that point and covered under the Energy Companies Act? I would have to um, take advice on that because I'm, off the top of my head I can't tell you how an energy company is defined, so I'd have to take advice, I'm sorry. But, but it would probably be fair to assume most likely not, given that it wasn't covered when it was a company that was jointly managed, along, governed by it with, alongside, alongside Delta, for example. So given that they've never had this requirement before and it's new with them now being standalone, I think that's a kind of a hint as to what the answer might be. So um, when councils can consider us assuming a CCO back into, um, into their operations, we might be able to consider whether or not, in fact, you in fact can assess what they're doing under the Goyma as a, as a mechanism for assuming whether we would or would not ever want to consider that. It was a long way to say it, but I mean, and we could definitely let Aurora know that that's a thought. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay. So, um, I guess it's up to, uh, is there anyone wishing to move something? Councillor Vanders. I wish to move that we ask staff to investigate a plausible way in which asking Aurora Energy to voluntarily comply with Lagoima would be uh, able to be managed. Now look, I, I'm, not, I'm not prepared to accept that uh, resolution be because it's not re pertinent to the point. I, I know where you're going and I'm not, and I understand, but the point, we've got, we're in a process here and we need to either ask um, Aurora or, or DCHL to direct Aurora to put this in their statement of intent or not. And then, the, then they feed back. So what you're asking for, as we've just been told by the CEO, will happen if we ask for uh, this to be included in their statement of intent. So okay. if, your, if your intention is that they voluntarily comply and, and, uh, with a Lagoima uh, commitments, then that's what you need to move. Right, I, I do move that uh, in the hope that uh, the compliance issue will then be able to be sorted, hopefully. Well, but that's I recognise the it may process not be able that we've told you we will bring back you, uh, right. to you as the next step. That's and they the have plan. to. They have to respond. Right. Um, so, and they have to respond either yes, no, or can we talk about it? Okay. So I move simply that Aurora um, Energy voluntarily comply with the Groima requests. Right. So that's been seconded by Councillor Staines. Uh, do you wish to speak further to it at the moment? Or? No, right. Councillor, do you wish to speak, Councillor Hawkins? The question of, of the mover, perhaps, I mean, there is wording in the recommendations, and I'm just trying to get a sense of how 
what has just been proposed differs from that or whether you're comfortable with this uh, as the motion. Yes, yeah, so the recommendation is that to decide if it wishes to request via DCHL that Aurora Energy Limited amend its draft statement of intent, et cetera. So that it's more, it's, which sets out the process that we want them to follow rather than just focusing on the so outcome. To, so what you're saying, and I agree with you, to achieve the end that you, I think you're seeking to achieve, Councillor Vandivis, I think your motion should just simply read that Council requests via DCHL that Aurora Energy Limited amend its draft uh, statement of intent to commit to voluntary compliance with the Local Government Official Informational Meetings Act 1987, Laguama 2018. Much tidier, thank you. Great. Happy with that? Right. <coughs> so, are there further speakers? <coughs> there being none, which do you wish to exercise your right of reply? We have a situation where uh, we've just been told that none of the other energy companies in the country actually are required to do this, and apparently nobody's asked for them to do that. <coughs> I suggest that in our case, because we have, up until very recently, had Aurora and Delta rolled into one CCO that was able to be accessed uh, for Lagoima information, that for us now to not uh, allow that process to happen would, in the view of some people at least, uh, be seen to be uh, in some way ring-fencing a council-owned company and making them less uh, a, um, amenable to uh, stakeholder questions. Uh, I accept that there may be some uh, compliance issues um, which uh, would need to be uh, nutted out later and in fact that we may not be able to nut them out. It may just be a, a too hard situation. But I would very much like to get the response from Aurora uh, to uh, their uh, voluntary um, uh, complying with Lagoima, especially given the statements um, by <coughs> the chair of DCHL that he thought that that might happen anyway. So I, I, I believe that this um, motion simply gives it a chance rather than makes it happen. Okay. All right, I'm going to put it. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? It's carried. Thank you. Right, on to item. Thank you. That was pretty straightforward. <laughs> item 17, Delegation to Infrastructure Services Network Committee. Oh, you're staying where you are, Ms. Graham. I am, Your right. Worship. So, um, would anyone? I'll open it up to questions for a start. Uh, questions from Ms. Graham. Seems to, to Councillor Vandivis. I understand that this slight departure from normal is basically just to speed up a process and allow the infrastructure committee to do what we would tick off anyway. Um, uh, yes, it's a, to allow okay. the process. So, as such, ha happy to move option one recommended. Right, second of the council order. Are there any further questions before we must be moved and seconded? Does anyone wish to speak to it? I'm going to put it. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Although I do <coughs> resent the implication, Councillor Vandivis, that we just tick off anything here. <laughs> <laughs> you may resemble that, sir. <laughs> right. Um, I will move from the chair um, that the meeting move into confidential for the reasons outlined in the agenda pr um, pursuant to the provisions of the Local Government Information and Meetings Act. Second to Councillor Staines. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? 